All right, so now we're gonna um, tackle the rest of this chapter, which is how the skin is nourished. And hopefully we'll tackle the rest of it and we'll talk about some vitamins and some of the structures that are inside of our skin anatomy. So the skin is nourished because it's blood fed. Know that anything that's blood fed is gonna be what's gonna nourish it. That's why it's very difficult to regrow human hair in a lab because if we make hair cells, how are we gonna make sure they're gonna get blood fed and stay alive? Our skin runs in the same way. So know that nutrients such as carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, those are all basic biomolecules and macronutrients or macromolecules that are necessary for life and for uh, the skin to have good nutrition. So the skin cannot be properly nourished through products. I know um, products can kind of be uh, mismarketed saying they'll nourish the skin or they'll feed the skin. But it's almost like taking, um, like let's say you have a headache and you take your Advil, it's almost like taking your Advil and rubbing it on your forehead, hoping that it will cause the headache to go away. Now the skin does absorb some um, essential oils and some ingredients like that, and that's why you gotta be careful to what you're putting on your skin. Um, but you're not gonna replace good nutrition by using good skincare products. Good skincare products are important, but you wanna eat a good diet so the products can work the best they can. And that way you're giving your body both the nutrition it needs, but also giving it additional supplementation that can help. Um, know that lymph, which is the clear fluids of the body that bathe the skin cells, they remove toxins and cellular waste and have immune functions that help protect the skin and the body against disease. So your skin is actually living, it's loaded with life and all these different um, organisms that help it. And you'll even learn a lot about this, which is interesting. Microbes, like bacteria, even though we call them germs and think they're icky and they're not important, they actually play a vital role for um, skincare health because we're finding that some people that have lack of certain bacteria may have certain diseases like acne, which is, could be an overgrowth of bad bacteria. So there's always a, a system of checks and balances in our skin. So your skin also has the following nerve fibers. Motor nerve fibers, which are attached to the muscle and the brain, and that causes the um, goosebumps to move. Think of motor move. Sensory nerve, fire, net nerve fibers, which react to heat, cold, touch, and pressure and pain. These send the messages to the brain of your sensory system. This makes the massage feel good, or the um, exfoliator sting, or the facial feel warm. It allows us to feel um, senses. And there actually are people that have disorders in which they feel no pain, which is scary, but it's real. There are secretory nerve fibers, which are distributed to the sudoriferous sweat and sebaceous oil glands of the skin. And they're part of the um, autonomic nervous system, your ANS, and that regulates the um, excretion of perspiration, um, fat or oil. And know that your papillary layer of your dermis houses the nerve endings that provide the body with the sense of touch. Um, nerve endings are most abundant in the fingertips. Complex sensations such as vibration, it depends on the sensitivity of a combination of these nerve endings. So there's different types of nerves that detect different layers of pressure and the combination of them can register um, deeper pressure versus lighter pressure and all of that. And this is important because when we have a client, we wanna ask them how um, intense they want their massage or um, what kind of pressure they like, firm, moderate, or light. So onto skin color. If you look at your um, chapter, it shows you this uh, diagram, light versus dark skin. Skin comes in so many different shades. And that's all because of one pigment, your melanin. And these are produced by melanocytes, which are special cells that produce color. They're produced and deposited into cells in the stratum dermativum layer of the epidermal and papillary layer of the dermis. The color of the skin is a hereditary trait and varies among races and nationalities. Your genes are what determine your final um, pigment in your skin. And your body produces two types of melanin. Pheomelanin, which is red and yellow in color, also plays a role in our hair as well, and eumelanin, which is dark brown to black. People with light colored skin produce mostly pheomelanin, and if you have darker colored skin, you're producing a lot more um, eumelanin. So know that with the melanin, the size of melanin granules vary from one individual to another, and this kind of gives you like depth to your skin tone. And know that melanin is important because it protects sensitive skin Sensitive cells, I almost said skin cells, sensitive cells from the sun's UV light, but does not provide enough protection to prevent skin damage. And this is why daily use of a sunscreen, whether you're in the winter or in the summer, is important. And they recommend using at least a 15 SPF or higher to help the melanin protect skin from um, burning or skin cancer or premature aging. 
And that's why I had someone ask, if you have very dark skin, does that protect you from sunburn? And the answer is no, not always. You can have very dark skin and still get sunburn. No, there's actually a chart. It's the Fitzpatrick scale, and that's the one thing I always recommend all of you look up because if you get into skincare, it's key that you know the Fitzpatrick scale. What kind of chemical peel you can get depends on where you fall on the Fitzpatrick scale. If you're on the lighter end of it, you're able to do more chemical peels. And if you're on the darker end of the Fitzpatrick scale, you're limited in what you can do if you don't prep the skin because if you have very dark skin and you take the strongest um, TCA peel and you slap it all over your face, look up the YouTube fails that have that. You'll see that people that have very dark skin can get um, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or um, at the sadder end of it, they can actually bleach your skin out and cause um, permanent white splotches in it. So your skin is also um, strong and flexible and it has two types of structures, two actually very specific types of protein. You have collagen and elastin and know um, that these flexible proteins make up 70% of the dermis. Your collagen, which is the fiber, fibrous protein, gives the skin form and strength. It makes up a large percentage of the dermis and provides structure and support by holding together all the structures in your layer. So your collagen fibers become weak with age, lack of moisture, environmental damage such as UV light, frequent changes in weight. The skin will begin to lose its tone and suppleness and wrinkles and sagging result. So if you've ever seen someone have stretch marks, that's why it happens. Um, really quick guys, I do want to mention one thing before I talk about um, elastin, which is the second type of protein that's in the skin. And that's um, when we're talking about melanin and melanocytes, look at your diagram because you'll see that melanin is the one granule and then the melanocytes are going to be the groups of cells. So it's kind of like, um, I know it gets like hard to memorize and to think of, but it's the cells that house it are the sites like cell, that's gonna be your pigment cells and your melanin is gonna be in there. So um, here's something really interesting in the did you know section, the word collagen comes from the Greek words kala meaning glue and genon meaning to produce. Um, know that, here's what's really interesting about collagen. When you have collagen and elastin, the more you have of both, your skin's gonna look vibrant and tight and one of the things that will loosen both of those proteins and damage them is not um, just tanning or suntan, which is really bad for your skin. But when I see a lot of young people getting stressed and they're like grabbing at their face, they're going like, er, I'm like, oh my God, stop, because they're actually gonna wear down their skin proteins and it's gonna cause their face to sag and droop. So extensive pressure can cause that to happen. Your elastin is a protein base similar to collagen that forms elastic tissue. Elastin is interwoven with collagen fibers your elastin fiber gives skin flexibility and elasticity. It helps the skin regain shape even after being repeatedly stretched and expanded. Elastin can be weakened by the same factors that weaken collagen. Both types of fibers are important to overall health and appearance of the skin. As we age, gravity causes these fibers to weaken, and in the end, we're gonna get sagging skin. But with good um, self-care, good nutrition, and good skincare, we can offset a lot of that. They do make additional cosmetic injectables such as collagen injections that people do and that helps to fill the skin like fillers. Um, and those are a personal choice. But I know some people do those early to prevent um, everything else from happening. Um, you do have a lot of scientists believe that most signs of skin aging are caused by the sun over a lifetime and that's cumulative damage. So, you know, if we get sunburned once, it's not gonna be the end of the world that you caused permanent irreversible damage. But if we're sunburned, 50 plus times and we're sunburned multiple times a year over and over again. We may not see it when we're in the first 10 years of our life, but we're probably gonna start seeing it when we're in our 30s or 40s and so on and so forth. You'll see people that have been so sun damaged that they actually have um, sun bleaching. So my gram, who she still loves the sun and she did a big no-no. She went and she got laser resurfacing and she went out and laid out in the sun, which is a huge no-no because your skin is more prone to burning. She still has um, white blotches, clusters of sun bleach spots from where her skin has not only hyperpigmented, but also because it um, got bleached from the sun. And I'm guilty of it too. Sometimes I don't wear sunscreen and I end up getting um, hyperpigmentation spots. So if you want to use a if you want to preserve your skin, they recommend, scientists recommend using a high SPF, maintaining a moisture skincare regimen, 
Keeping skin free of disease will slow the weakening of collagen and elastin, and it will help the skin look younger. Also take a look at the um, anatomy chart here because that gives you a better appreciation of what the layers of skin look like from a cross section of what they look like when you go down. It's just so fascinating because if we take a look at this, you get a better appreciation of this. You also have um, specialized glands of the skin. Your skin contains two types of glands that extract minerals from the blood to form new substances. Sudoriferous glands, which are kind of look like a tube, they make sweat and they push sweat out of it. And they use a uh, secretary coil, which kind of looks like a bundle and it's kind of like bent up. It almost looks like a Dr. Seuss instrument. This is going to be the, um, the coil base is going to be the base of your sudoriferous gland and the tube like sweat duct, duct ends at the surface of the skin to form your sweat pore. And practically all parts of her body are supplied with sweat glands which are more numerous of the palms of the hand and soles of the feet and the forehead and underarm. So think of if someone gets bad body odor, it's because they're sweating a lot under here. If you ever had itchy palms, it's because your palms are getting wet from the sweat. Or you can see the sweat if you're running, if you're into fitness, you actually sweat that way. It's our body's way of cooling us down and getting rid of excess salt. So your pseudoriferous glands will help to um, regulate body temperature and eliminate waste from the body. Um, notice that if someone's been drinking a lot or eating a lot of foods that smell weird like garlic, they're actually going to sweat it out and that's going to give them foul smelling sweat and it will increase their body odor. And that's why it's very important to shower after eating a lot of garlic or foods that may smell bad. Know that the excretion of sweat is controlled by the nervous system and that also means that if there is a disability, it can cause someone to sweat a lot more or less. Normally, um, one to two pints of salt containing liquid are eliminated daily through sweat in the pores of our skin, but because we're releasing it slowly and it's air drying, it doesn't seem like we're being drenched. Um, but of course, for exercising a lot, we're gonna be sweating a lot more. So now our um, sebaceous glands, which are oil glands, um, are a blessing and a curse. And when I say that, um, they produce sebum, which is a fatty, um, waxy substance that lubricates the skin and it keeps us young. Now our sebum is custom made to us and that's the future of skincare. Um, check out my friend's YouTube channel, Miss Beautifile. She's absolutely amazing. And her Instagram, she does a lot of um, talking about the chemistry of it, what sebum is, how it works, and how a lot of skincare companies are taking that same technology of our own biochemistry and trying to make it into a form of skincare that can be used. So know that um, sebum, what this is gonna do, it's gonna lubricate the body but if we have too much of it, it's not good. It's gonna give us a musty odor. It's gonna make our skin look dirty and um, greasy. And um, the other issue is that because sebum should ideally flow out of the gland, should you produce too much sebum and it gets stuck, it's gonna end up causing a comedo, a comedome, which is also known as a blackhead. And what that is, it's caused when uh, sebum gets hard or it gets jammed up in there. Sometimes dead skin cells come up and cover it or uh, makeup that's, um, not good quality. That can lead to a blackhead, which is a follicle filled with keratin and sebum. Sounds delicious, right? Um, and then that can lead to acne, a papule or a pustule. Acne, which is also known as acne vulgaris, is a skin disorder caused by chronic inflammation of the sebaceous gland um, that is retained in secretions of bacteria. So you'll have the um, numerous acne, but underneath there you have a lot of bacteria filled up in there and it's gonna be known as propanobacteria acnes, also known as P. acnes, which is the scientific name for acne bacteria. This could also be a cause for a lot of acne, and this will also help you tailor your facial treatments and advanced skincare to clients that have acne issues. And the technical term for acne is um, P. acnes, as we said. A papule is also known as a pimple, and this is gonna be a small elevation in the skin. It's like a bump, and the Elevation will contain no fluid, but it may develop pus. And a pustule is a raised inflamed papule with white or yellow center containing pus in the top of the lesion referred to as the head of the pimple. In layman's terms, um, a pustule is also gonna be known as a white head. You do not wanna pop a white head or pop any pimples because what that's gonna do is cause either scarring and infection or cause that bacteria to burst internally and a spread. So you actually can cause more acne that way. What you can do is do extractions of comedones because it's a blackhead with either a vacuum or extract it. You want to extract it and then cleanse the face because when you're doing a facial, you don't want to be spreading that all around the face because that can cause additional breakouts. 
Also know that touch is one of the first sensations to develop in the human body. I didn't know that. I always thought that was always interesting to learn. So know that your skin has six principal functions. Protection, our skin is there to protect us from disease. It prevents us from leaking out. Know that we have sensation. Sensation is there so we know that something's wrong. You know, if we have our hand on the hot stove, we want to know that something's wrong so we can take it off and prevent a third degree burn or a burn that's so severe that we get an infection or lose all feeling. We want to know that something is too hot or too cold so we can make decisions to maintain homeostasis, such as putting a sweater on, um, turning up the air conditioning or the heat. Our body has um, skin for heat regulation, which um, keeps our body at a stable 98.6 degrees. Um, without homeostasis, we would get very sick and it can even cause brain damage. So if we have a fever that's too high or if we're hypothermic, we can black out. Um, know that excretion is a function. Excretion is gonna be removal, so it's perspiration from the sweat glands. Um, water is lost through that sensation. And secretion, which is producing a substance. Sebum is secreted through the sebaceous gland, and that's gonna help keep our hair um, lustrous, our skin looking nice in moderation. And absorption. Now, some ingredients can be absorbed through the outer layers of skin, but few ingredients can penetrate the epidermis. Um, small amounts of fatty materials, such as those used in many um, skin formulations, may be absorbed between cells. Um, however, cosmetic products are not formulated to penetrate into the epidermis. I will say that if you use retinol or retin-A over time, that can be absorbed into the skin and cause shedding. That's why it's actually ideal to do your treatments after you exfoliate because the skin is nice and open and when you put that in there, it's going to penetrate into the skin deeper. You also want to take a look, um, take a minute, because what I'll do now is I'm getting close to that 20 minute mark, so I'm going to break here and then I'm going to finish this up with talking about um, some of the healthy behaviors of skin that can protect our skin. But I wanna end this here um, talking about the specialized receptors and the nerves. Take a look at this really good chart right here and appreciate it for a minute because this is something we always take for granted. I know I always said that structure and function are related. It's always so interesting how some of these receptors look interest, they look like the, the very thing they're sensing. It looks interesting because when you look at your cold receptor, it almost looks like an ice cube. Our pain receptors, it almost looks like a thorny bush. So that gives you the idea of like, oh, pain. Um, the one that looks interesting is our touch receptor and our pressure receptor. That doesn't look like anything in particular, but our heat receptor, it almost looks like a smoking match. And it just is so interesting that we have all these um, receptors that can help us sense our environment. And it really gives us a new appreciation for our bodies and how they function. So the next part of this um, chapter is gonna be very basic. I'm just gonna touch upon some nutrition, um, maintaining it, and we're gonna talk about water, which is one of the most important macronutrients that you need.